In this video, we're going to explore the use of some freely available tools to pick a good color theme for our Android app. We're going to look at the color wheel, and we're going to look at color sampling with GIMP, and we are going to take a look at a nine patch image. When I first released my own mobile app, my wife told me that I needed to make it look more like a mobile app. And as a programmer, that doesn't always come naturally to me. So this is a default application I've written with Android Studio. And you see the button to me looks fine, but nonetheless, it is kind of monochrome. We're, we're looking at shades of gray. So how do we pick a color that's gonna work for us? Well, a lot of times if we're doing an app on behalf of someone or even doing our own app, it's kind of hard to pick a color theme. So what I recommend is find a picture that inspires you or find a picture that maybe stands for what you want to represent. For example, I've gone here to plainplaces.com and I found a picture of a brilliant yellow flower in the uh, Carrier Japonica. Let's say that I want to use this as inspiration for a color. And there are plenty of others. There are magnolias. There are lots of flowers naturally uh, that have nice color. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose copy image and next I'm going to start GIMP. Okay, and I have a sample of a different uh, picture I was using earlier back there, but I'm going to say, so here's one that has kind of more pink and purple, but nonetheless, I'm going to say edit and then I'm going to say paste as new image. And what that's going to do is it's going to give me a, it's going to just paste this image into GIMP. Now in GIMP, which by the way, GIMP is a, an open source uh, photo editing tool similar to Photoshop. Uh, so in GIMP, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the eyedropper here in Toolbox. And I'm going to click, and you notice as I click on this picture, it's sampling the colors that are underneath my cursor. Uh, and there are several ways that we can... Uh, there are several ways that we can do this. We can average colors together if it's something like this, like a photograph with many colors involved. Um, I'll just use it as is. And I want to get a fairly bright yellow color. So we see here's a bright yellow color. And I double click on that, and that brings up the change foreground color box. What's important about this is it gives me the HTML notation. I'm going to copy that, highlight and copy. HTML notation is going to be in a six character code with the numbers zero through nine and the letters A through F, uh, hexadecimal in other words. Uh, a lot of the Microsoft development tools have this eyedropper tool as well. The nice thing about them is it will actually let you go anywhere on your screen and, and sample the color, but uh, in GIMP it's a bit easier to import the photo with the paste as new image as I did. In any case, we want to find colors that work well with this F3DE5. And what I'm going to do is go to a website called uh, Paletan, or Paletan, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. But this shows us the color wheel. And typically what's going to happen is a color on one side, if we look at the exact opposite side, we will find a color that complements that. In other words, a color that works well together. So I can click on the first little bubble here. Now, the trick is I want the exact yellow color that I sampled, that F3DE15 color. And that's what I copied into my buffer, my clipboard. So I go in here, I click on the base hex code, and I'm going to paste F3DE15, and I'm going to choose OK. And it shows me again this yellow color that I have picked from the Caria Japonica. So I do that, and I can uh, take a look at colors that are neighbors. So you see colors that are kind of similar. Or I can look at the uh, triad, which is kind of a nice grouping. It's not directly the color across, but it's a few neighboring colors from that complementary color. And we see these kind of look good together. I kind of like the yellow and the purple. Those look pretty nice. We could go with the uh, tetrad. That's also a nice combination. Or we can go back to the monochromatic and choose with complement, and that will show us the exact opposite color on the color wheel. So this gives us a good idea on some inspiration for some colors. I'll tell you what, let's stick with the tetrad. I like the yellow, and I also like the green. What I want to do now is I want to change this button to take advantage of that yellow and green. So I want the button to be a little bit of the yellow and a little bit of the green. And ideally what I would do is I would theme my entire app this way with these two colors, and the button would be a reflection of that. 
What I can use in this case is called a nine patch. With a nine patch, we take a button, or actually an image that's behind a button, and we convert it into nine different boxes. The corners will not stretch. The bottom, the middle, and the top of this kind of middle column here will get wider as the button gets wider. The left side in the middle, the middle, and the right side in the middle will get taller as the button gets taller. So it's an image that's meant to be resized. It's meant to look good in any size. It's called a nine patch image. Okay, to create a, a base, I need a bevel button. But how am I gonna create a button out of these colors? Well, I go back to GIMP and in GIMP, I'm gonna say file and I'm gonna say create and then I'm gonna say button and I'm gonna say simple bevel button. This is going to bring up a wizard that's going to prompt me for a couple of colors. Upper left corner, what I will do is I will paste in the yellow color I sampled from the carrier, and OK. And then lower right color, that's really the color that's in the middle, I am going to go back to my color wheel, and I am going to choose this green color, which is C9EB14. You see when I mouse over, C9EB14. So I click. and C9EB14, and you see it's a bit of a green color, so oop, oh, that didn't come out right. C9EB14, let's try that, and there we go, there's our green color. Bevel width four, padding two, that's fine. I choose OK. What this is going to do is it's going to create a button that contains those two colors. It's probably a little hard to see on this video, but we have the yellow at the top, the green in the middle, and then a black shade underneath, okay? Now, it gave us some text because it has to, but we don't wanna put text on the image because that's not internationalization friendly. We wanna put the text as a label uh, through the Android operating system. We don't wanna fix it to the image uh, or it will be impossible to translate. That's okay because the text is in a different layer. So I go up to layers, I right click, and I'm going to choose delete layer for the one that has the text. And it leaves me with the button, the bevel button, but without uh, the text on it. So I choose file and I choose export as, and we're going to call this one yellow green bevel PNG. Yellow green bevel PNG. Okay, and we choose export. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I am going to go to the Android Asset Studio. And by the way, all these URLs I'll put in the video comments. I'm going to choose Simple Nine Patch Generator. And now I'm going to say Select Image. And I'm going to find my, I've, you know, as you see, I've done this a few different times, Yellow Green Bevel. And you notice that it expands the image and it loads it in this little frame here. What I can do now is choose how to cut this up into its pieces. And remember, it's gonna be nine boxes and the corners are not gonna stretch when the image is resized. The, top, the uh, center left, center and center right will get taller as the image gets taller. The center top, center and uh, center bottom will get wider as the image gets wider. For example, if you put a lot of text in the image. And you see here it's using the colors that we sample and the colors that we put into GIMP. So what I do now is I say, I, I'm happy with this, so I'm going to say download zip. And it is going to bring this up in a zip. What's nice is that not only does it make the image for us in the right format, but it also puts it into the correct directory. So it makes four of them one for each resolution we wish to support. So at this point, I go into my, my uh, Android Studio, and I'm gonna right click on the drawable directory. I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna choose Copy Paths. I'm gonna hold down the Windows key and press E, which will open up Windows Explorer. I'm gonna click, Control V, and paste. Okay, 
And I see here I have res and I have drawable HDPI, MDPI, XHDPI, XXHDPI. This is the project directory for my project. Uh, I'll go back to the zip that I downloaded. And one at a time, I'm just going to copy these over into the appropriate directory. So there's one. And it uses a special format. You notice that it ends in 9.png. And that's just saying, hey, I'm a nine patch image. It's just that's the special formatting that Android uses to, to uh, say, uh, I know how to handle this image. I know it's a nine patch, which is something that I can stretch. So I drop it in. OK, now I go back to Android Studio. And a little refresh, give it just a moment. And sure enough, yellow, green, bevel, nine PNG. We expand and we see it right here, yellow, green, bevel, 9, PNG, one, once for each uh, of the uh, densities. Next, I go to my layout. And in that button that I wish to change, I am going to simply say Android colon background equals double quote at symbol drawable. And then a slash, and then just the button name, not the 9 in the PNG. I'm sorry, just the image name, not the 9 in the PNG. So we called that green, what do we call it? Yellow green, yellow green bevel, just like so. I choose save. And essentially, we're all set. Uh, I'm going to pause the video for a moment so I can bring up the debugger and show you what it looks like. Now, here's the new image, not so gray anymore. Uh, if you can see, it has kind of a light color on the top and then a gradient that turns to the uh, greenish color on the right. Uh, these two colors are fairly close. It's not the contrasting yellow and purple. Uh, but nonetheless, what you see, so if I made two different two colors that were very different, you'd see a, a more defined difference in the colors. But nonetheless, what you do see from this is that we have taken advantage of our inspiration picture and we have created a button with these two colors, the one from the picture and one that isn't a palette that works well with that other color. And we have given our, uh, we've given our UI a nice theme. And you see that the button has stretched from the original image, which was actually fairly small, uh, all the way up to this pause GPS. And it looks good. It, it looks like it looks natural. It doesn't look pixelated or anything like that. So I hope this has been helpful to you. Uh, again, I'll put the links in the lower part of the video. And of course, if it has been helpful, I, I would love to hear from you. Uh, like, subscribe, anything else, any other way you would like to leave feedback. Thank you.